Welcome back to TCM. I'm here with actor and martial artist Mark DeCoscos. Thank you, Jacqueline. And we're talking about Bruce Lee. This next film is a really unique and important and kind of strange one. It is. Bruce Lee and his producer Raymond Chow started Game of Death after The Way of the Dragon. And then they had the opportunity to do a co-production with Warner Brothers in Hollywood for the movie Enter the Dragon. So they put Game of Death on hold, did Enter the Dragon, and were hoping to finish the rest of Game of Death afterwards. Yes, and it did not happen. That did not, not happen. Not with Bruce Lee, Not right? with Bruce Lee. Yes, yes. So the film is about a martial arts actor yes. who's being pressured by gangsters who want to control his career. Correct. And the way they finished it was they used clips of Bruce's other movies and stunt doubles as best they could to fill in the parts that was Bruce. I must say that the 19 or 20 minutes that we actually get to see Bruce is phenomenal. Mm. Three iconic fight scenes. Yes. The first one against his close friend and senior student, Guru Dan Inosanto. And we get to see him explore with a bamboo Chinese whip against Guru Dan Inosanto's Eskrima sticks. And you can only be as good as your partner. Mm. So they were a fantastic foil for each other. I love it. It's Fred Astaire, Ginger Rogers. Yes, yeah, exactly. And that yellow suit clearly inspired Kill Bill. Absolutely. <laughs> Iconic. Then you have the Hapkido Master, Chi Han Jae. Brilliant. And you see that the Hapkido Master gets a few moves in on Bruce as well. Mm. And then they're both on the ground. And while Chi Han Jae is taking a slight rest, Bruce looks like he's going to take a rest, and pop! He breaks the rhythm and throws a kick to the guy's face while he's on the ground. And then we get to see a great interaction with the wonderful, incredible NBA star Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And I believe Bruce was five foot seven and Kareem, what, seven foot two, something like that? I mean, the difference is... The difference! It's funny, actually. It adds humor to the scene. Yes, story. yes. And to think that in real life, Kareem actually went to lessons to Bruce. So that, that's showing you something. You have this great athlete who's way taller coming to a much smaller teacher mm. and learning. And I think there was mutual respect for each other because to be in the NBA, you have to be super talented and athletic. And he's got the size, mm. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. So to see those two go at it and you see how Bruce Lee's character figures out how to become victorious against somebody that's bigger, stronger, longer reach, and all these things. You see Bruce Lee fighting different styles with different styles to overcome. Yes. This is a film, even though we only get, you know, so much original Bruce Lee material yes. in it, the way that the filmmaker set this up for us yes. is quite powerful. It is powerful. I think they did, uh, they did the best they could without having Bruce in the, in the whole movie. We'll also see some footage from Bruce Lee's funeral in this film. Yes, interesting how they actually used real footage inside the narrative of this film. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much, Mark. Let's take a look. Here is Game of Death. Back with me to discuss Game of Death, I am with Mark DeCoscos. Jacqueline. It's really amazing to think about how young Bruce Lee was when he died. I wonder if you could talk about what you imagine he would have done, the places that he would have gone in his work had he lived Goodness, longer. That, that's a great question because, I mean, yes, 32 years old, so philosophical, so, you know, master storyteller at such a young age, embodied and present and political and open. You know, I, I ask that all the time because... He did so much with such little time. What could he have done? And I don't know the answer, but I know that 50 years later, you and I are here talking about Bruce Lee. And I think, again, it's the broken rhythm that he brings. It's that sense of humor. You get this physical dialogue. You know how he feels or what he's thinking. You see that. It's that personality, the expressions, the art embodied and personified, right, through movement. I love what you're saying because it's the way that people talk about musical numbers. Yes. That it's not just about seeing their virtuosity, the physical virtuosity, but it's actually telling you something about the characters. And that's what's so incredible about Bruce Lee's choreography and execution of his movements. It has spirit. And one could argue that Bruce Lee's choreography is very simple in terms of moves, 
compared to more traditional martial arts movies and all this flying kung fu, which is fun too, or compared to all of the extravagant and crazy and I, w- I would say incredible because some of the twists they do, but the, the movements that the young stunt men do and stunt women do nowadays, you know, compared to Bruce's, one could say that Bruce's choreography was simple. Mm. And I would agree. However, the execution was sublime, extraordinary. And that comes through years of training and hard work. The definition of Kung Fu or Gung Fu, as Bruce Lee pronounced it, a lot of people think that's just meaning martial art. But the original meaning, from what I was taught, meant skill attained through hard work and long time. Bruce Lee had Gung Fu. Oh my goodness. Because to take simple choreography and make it look fantastic, you have to be fantastic. Mm, yes. And I would yes. argue he was. Thank you so much, Mark, for sharing so much with us over these weeks as we've reflected on Bruce Lee and Thank his you, remarkable legacy. Thank you. Thank you, Jacqueline. So we are wrapping up for tonight, but please stay with us for more on TCM. Always uncut and commercial free. Next on TCM, Strange Bargain, then Dress to Kill, and later, Sisters. TCM has separation anxiety tonight.